family is here. Oh, Scooby, do you have books to recommend? Yeah. Do you have books to recommend? Give us all your book recs. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. So today we are here with a new video. Um, yeah, this is my boyfriend Nico. If Hello. you guys um, don't know him, I haven't done a video with him in a while. But sometime like early last year, we did this exact same thing, but we wanted to do it again, and that is basically giving each other a TBR. So last time we did three books each, I think, and this time we're going to be doing four books each. But yeah, we have very different reading tastes, but we also always want each other to be reading our books, so. This is how we're gonna do that. But do you wanna go first or should we switch uh, off? We'll switch off, you go first. This is literally just us forcing each other to read our favorite books. So the first book I recommend you is The Idiot by Peter Dustin. Wow. Who would have fucking guessed yeah. that? Um, if you guys didn't know, this is my favorite book of 2020 and one of my favorite books of all time. So um, Nico still hasn't read it. So you, you're gonna read it you now. I read it a couple months ago. I mean, I read it like almost a year ago now. <laughs> I read it last June. So, yeah, this is your first book. Yeah, yay. I'm giving you a couple of pretty chunky classics, but... Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm excited. I haven't really read any of those Yeah. I want to get into the very angry little Russian man that he is. That's how he was described. <laughs> should I, okay, should I go with yeah, mine? you go for All it. Alright. This fucking book. Alright, you also know this one. I'm just going with one that you definitely know. Yes. Hard Rain Falling by Don mm -hmm. Carpenter. He's been talking about this since yeah, you this, read it. This fucking book. This book. What do I say about this book? This is a book. Um, this book is amazing. It was written in 1966, and for that time and for that era, this book is bold. It is just, it's so good. It's about these two boys growing up in the pool halls in Oregon and how their lives converge and separate and come together in very sad and violent, but also very meaningful ways. How race is tackled in this, sexuality, this is so out there for 1966 and it's just devastating but so such an amazing read i'm, I'm in it, it for the gays yes it is gay in a very surprising way i'm in it for the gays That's <laughs> yeah let's go with the other really obvious one that i'm gonna give you which is my other favorite book of wow. 2020 see this is a nice small one for your convenience i think you already started, I started reading one time. that <laughs> yeah you got like 35 pages into it yeah. and it's a great book so you should okay. keep reading it and you're gonna finish it it's very it's like 300 pages long but yes this was my second favorite book of 2020 and i have forced everyone to read it and it's amazing and it's really really fast i don't know how you Got 35 pages in. I, I just, I, I've been in a, such a, I was in a reading slump basically yeah, for like a year sure. and a half. And then I've just been reading a ton more recently, so I feel more confident to take these on. Although I did read um, most of the books you gave me last time. Yeah, you read all of them. I think. I didn't finish uh, Battle Royale. Oh, right, right. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another one you know. The other one you know. Okay. <laughs> you asked specifically for this yes. just to make you read this. Uh, Epitaph, Epitaph of a Small Winner. It should be right here. Yeah, Epitaph of a Small Winner by Machado de Assis. He is widely considered the greatest author ever produced in Brazil. Uh, he was writing in the late 1800s. This is a very modern book for the 1800s. It's about this dude who is writing the story of his life after he has died. He did not write this at the end of his life. He died and then started writing it. Uh, I don't love the title. The title's kind of weird, but um, it doesn't express just how... It's kind of, it's really funny and very darkly cynical, and it's a very, very interesting read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you? Yeah. yeah. I'm excited about this one. People in my Patreon keep wanting to read it, so I'll see if you guys want to read it with me. But, um, yeah, I'm excited for that one. I've been meaning to read that for quite a while. Plus, everyone keeps telling me to read more South American Brazilian literature, so. It's surprisingly a sect of literature that hasn't made it into America much at all. Yeah. But it's, a lot of people love Latin American literature. Yeah, oh, I've been trying to read some of it, but like, there's not a ton of options, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, I've dabbled. So, do you know what I'm gonna give you? No, I didn't know, I only knew the idiot. That's the only one I could hear. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know um, you were doing the only <laughs> one either. Oh, really? <laughs> no. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm giving you another classic. A little more. Wow. You said you wanted to read yeah, it. Yeah, too. You're just I mean, throwing things listen. at me. I was trying to be nice to you, giving you short books. Yes, Middle March. It's my favorite book of 2021 so far. It's my only favorite book of the year so far. And I fucking loved it. And yeah, it's like 800. It's, it's only like <laughs> 785 pages. 
People are always like, oh my god, it's like a thousand pages. My copy is 785 pages. So far, what I've given to you is less than half of that. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> this is a great book. And also, you literally saw me read it. I read it in like four or five days. Yeah, you're a fast reader. But like, also, I haven't been reading much at all. So yeah. this is this, this is such a good one if you just really want a long book. Okay. So, there you go. Have yeah, fun. <laughs> Alright, last physical one that I have here. Oh, right, you're making me get one on Kindle. Yes. Oh God! <laughs> I'm glad I picked a long one. The Correction by Jonathan Franzen. Oh Last year, I recommend I made her read Freedom, which mm -hmm. she loved. I did. I did Favorite like book it. of all time. No, four stars. For Kate. Four stars. For four and a half. Four stars. Must be four and a half. Four stars. Four point two five. Four point two three three. Four point two five. Four point six five. Okay, we'll go with four point two five. We'll we'll Stop. settle it at <laughs> five, five. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Corrections. A lot of people think this is Franzen's best book. I didn't share that opinion. I think it's awesome. I just Freedom is one of my favorite books of all time, so I'll be interested to see what Kate thinks about it. It's another, as with Franzen, he's best when he's dissecting the horror of a middle-class white family and how terrible that life can be. And uh, it's, it's basically about this family, uh, three separate children, all of their kind of, all their issues and all their separate lives. Um, is this a UK copy? Where did you get this? I got this in Barnes and Noble, it, or no? Maybe I got it in a. UK. Maybe I got it in a used bookstore. It's the same one that's in Barnes and Noble. Oh really? Because yeah. it's, it's a UK. It's not a different edition. cover. But. Well, no, I can tell because of the format of it, and also it's in pounds. Oh, eh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it's basically about um, this mother and father um, who are trying. Well, the father is dying from Parkinson's, or so slowly getting it, and the mother's trying to set up like one last family Christmas. Um, before the father passes away, and he's sort of, he's not a good guy, he's very tyrannical, and it's very, it's just in the friends and way, the characters are so complex and so real, and it's just, I burned through it. I just yeah. remember just annihilating no, I, I, it. Yeah, I remember when you were reading it. Alright, yeah, no, I've been saying I want to read this for a while. Yeah, it's a great book. It won the National Book Award and Pulitzer Prize, like everything in this one. All right, so my last one is good. Everyone who's watching is going to get excited, but you're going to be like, what the fuck are you making me read? But I think you'll like it. It's stepping, it's stepping outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Uh, you didn't say no to am I getting No, manga, it's not manga. So, okay. It's not manga. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am recommending The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. No. Do you know what this is? No. Okay, so I read this last year. I honestly really want to reread it because I think I, I was a hipster. Uh, and I read it before, like, everyone else was reading this. Like, I'd seen one person talk about this book, and I picked it up. And I really, really liked it. But everyone else is, like, this has one of the highest Goodreads review ratings I've ever seen for how many reviews it has. It has, like, a 4.8 or something for, like, hundreds of thousands of reviews. And I'm like, okay. like, I really, really liked it. But I'm like, wow, maybe I should reread it to see if I like it more. Basically, this follows a man who is a social worker and in this world there are children with magical abilities but all of them go to this orphanage and he is the social worker who has to go to this orphanage to make sure that the kids are like being well taken care of and everything and it's really adorable it's really well written and um yeah there's like you know the son of lucifer and um a bunch of other quirky children at this quirky Orphanage, and yeah, I just thought it was really cute, yeah. and I thought it would be outside of your comfort zone. I was gonna say, yeah, normally a book <clears throat> that I would not read, but yeah, I'll give it a shot. Also, yeah, I feel like a lot of people think that it's middle grade because of the cover, but it's not. It's adult. It's just a very pretty cover. All right, so for my last book, I will be making you read. Should we get a little space yeah. here so you can Photoshop in? Yeah. Uh, the Wall by Marlon House Hoffer. Oh, I have that! I have, you it, do have, I have that? it on my Kindle. Okay, yeah. good. You haven't read it yet. Yeah. So, this is basically, I read this for AP Lit a long time ago. I remember it being like one of the first like books outside of Harry Potter that I was like, wow, that was really good. Because I didn't read like anything until like high school. Yeah. Um, it's just basically about this woman who she is in a house with, I believe, her sister or cousin and his husband, and her husband. And they leave for the night, and they never come back. And when she leaves her house, she finds that there's an invisible wall around, like, basically like a half mile or right around her. And that everything outside is dead. And all that she is left with is a, a cat, a cow, like a goat and a dog. And she's just basically writing her story because she has nothing else to do. And it's, it's really... It's really interesting. It's sort of like a weird German, yeah, it's also German, German yeah. magical realism, um, and I just thought it was fantastic. It was a long time mm -hmm. since I read, so I probably want to 
read it again eventually, but I just thought it was really good. And I no, I, I, I've literally had that on my to-read list for so long, and I downloaded it on my Kindle. Yeah, it's great. All right, so those are the, like, us picking each other's TBR. Also, I don't even know if I said, we don't have, like, a time period for this. Like, no. we're just going to read these over the next couple of months. Like, yeah, it's not going to be all tomorrow or, like, next month or something like that. So We'll get back yeah. to it eventually. Yeah. So you guys can stick around and wait for us to read these books, and we will tell you guys about what we thought of them after we read them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will be fun. We, we like, swap genres. Basically, yeah, yeah. You got two magical realism books and two classics, and I got a bunch of um, hard-hitting literary fiction. So my whole thing is it's just I read depressing books. Yeah, he, he likes depressing shit. <laughs> it's not that I like it, I just find most books that affect me are depressing. Yeah. It's just, for the most part, happy books don't do much for yeah, me. Yeah, House of Resiliency is the happiest book I've ever read. Okay. It's actually pretty sad, but like it's very happy and yeah. like whimsical and cheerful. Well, it's the thing, if... if if everybody's happy, what are you writing about? Not sure. What's, Not <laughs> what's sure. the conflict? Okay, anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and definitely leave us down in the comments below if you've read any of these books. Are you excited to see what we're going to be okay. reading? Like, what book are you guys the most excited to hear from our perspective? Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and I love y'all, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!